I'm Jay Arts Executive Director Laura Mandel, and it's great to be here with you for JLive. As you may know, JLive is our series of virtual cultural experiences that bring us together to explore and celebrate the diverse world of Jewish art, culture, and creative expression. We're bringing you bite sized conversations with the best Boston area talent. Today, I'm excited to be here with Mosaic artist Cecilia Kramer, who has a great story of how she came to Mosaic work that I'll let her share. But before then, I'll just say that Cecilia has been an incredible friend to Jay Arts and to me for many years. I just love her work and I equally love her commitment to community engagement. So if you have any questions during the conversation, please share them in the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen and I will ask as many questions as time allows. So now, Cecilia, welcome. Hi, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Jay Arts, for having invited me. It's a great, great privilege. I feel honored. And um, you know, it's a great uh, artist series. Um, so thank you. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, and I was born in Argentina, in case you don't recognize my accent, <laughs> and um, lived in, uh, in Israel from age 20 to 28. And then we moved here with our oldest son, and uh, we had another son here in the U.S. So we are all, uh, and I met my husband in Israel, we are all, all four of us are from a different country. And then our oldest son was, uh, uh, got married almost two years ago to our beautiful daughter in love. And um, so we are five, and we all bring our different backgrounds and customs, but um, I feel that Judaism is uh, one of those things that ties us together um, through music, literature, food, of course, um, values. So, um, and um, yeah, and I worked as an epidemiologist uh, for many years, and then um, what but I always enriched my life as an epidemiologist with the epidemiologist with a wide uh, spectrum of um, of um, artistic uh, forms. And once I encountered mosaics, uh, it became my obsession, my addiction, if you will. Um, basically, I do um, everything mosaic related. I make mosaics for um, um, shows, uh, art shows, exhibits. Um, I facilitate community projects. I teach mosaics either privately or in groups. One of the groups is in Hebrew, mosaic, mosaics in Hebrew. Um, then, um, um, so basically everything related to mosaics. Uh, one of the uh, community projects that I actually like the most is um, uh, working with grieving families because um, it's where I feel that I can help the most. Um, mosaic can be very um, therapeutic, if you will. And actually in 2014, I worked with a local dear family who tragically lost their beautiful boy. And um, I designed and worked with them. We started within a few days. Um, we designed a couple of mosaic benches. And um, over 100 people participate, participated. And uh, from friends and family, even family that came from uh, Israel. And uh, the idea was not only to create something long lasting to commemorate the life of a beautiful boy, but also to kind of ease ourselves together, um, literally with mosaics that can be very therapeutic. As I said, they, there is something very elemental about um, you know, creating a whole out of uh, broken, pieces, kind of uh, creating a, a whole and creating some kind of uh, unity and order. And um, 
So Cecilia, I just love the intention and how you combine the art form with the feeling. Can you show us the mock-up of the bench that you created for this? Yes, I have here um, the, like a prototype. This is the a little Gorgeous. that I made for this purpose and um, you know. So using this piece as the example, um, I mean on this or on the, on the real version, what would many of those pieces be made out of? Well, these are like handmade uh, ceramic tiles, but those um, are in a, the real world, the, the real project. Um, I had each participant received a, a circle about this size. The family received a little larger circle. So one bench was for family members and uh, closest family friends. And um, so each one made, uh, under my guidance, um, something that either, uh, that remember uh, their time together with uh, the um, boy, um, or something that enriched their own um, soul at that moment. So it was um, like, doing a sh like having a shiva but not uh for seven days or you know having people accompany the grieving family not only for that week or maybe a few weeks or a few months but actually almost the whole year it was like a perfect excuse to get together and be with them and laugh and cry and share stories all together and kind of find even if a little bit of solace within uh, the broken souls. So um, I think it's one of the great uh, things I like from Mosaic in general that can be very therapeutic or it's like putting together a puzzle. You feel very satisfied when you finish it and, uh, and you create something beautiful too. So hey, you get... Uh, Two things for the price of one. I love it. This is why we wanted you to share these stories with people. I, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, and I know you have a PowerPoint prepared for us with some images of some of your other works that I would love to dig into. Um, because in addition to the beautiful background that's behind you, and someone asked, I think those are all mosaic tiles behind you, correct? Yes. Uh, Just before we go to the PowerPoint, tell us. Right. I have um, tiles. Uh, tiles there, tiles everything. <laughs> I, the color coding is magnificent. <laughs> yes, it's fun, right? My sons love to come and mix them up for me to, <laughs> for a, as a little joke, and they continue doing it. And my daughter-in-law too. <laughs> love it. It's a family joke. So, okay, so sh go ahead, show us some of your other works, because I have to tell you all, she has made such an incredible variety of pieces, and I want you to be able to walk through some of them. Great. So, yes, I put together a few examples of each of the things I make, because as I said, I do mosaics for uh, exhibits, and I uh, but also teach and community projects and commissions for weddings, etc. So, I'll show you a little bit of this, can you see it? Looks great. Yes, okay. Yep. So this is actually my, um, one, of, one of the first mosaic pieces I made. And it was, um, and I started making this uh, figures with heads and legs only, without the torso or without the abdomen and, then I learned, I was doing this while our oldest son was in um, high school, getting ready to go to, to apply to colleges. And um, our youngest son was still home, but I was kind of anticipating that those years are coming when we are becoming empty nesters. And I applied to a show, a mosaic show, with one of these figures, and I explained what what they mean in um, some African cultures, the meaning of the figures, I have some of those that don't have the abdomen and it, the feel, it uh, symbolizes the feeling of the mothers 
when the kids leave home, that they kind of get a hole in their stomach. So um, once I, I applied to one show with one of these pieces and I always wonder whether they liked the piece and that's why they accepted it or they felt, oh, poor woman. <laughs> anyway, so that was the, this one is in Israel at my in-laws home. Um, let's see how it goes down. Um, uh, how do I go down? This is another example. Basically, I combine um, pieces of uh, electronic components or um, that uh, otherwise might be cold and hostile, if you will. But once you combine them with a shine and sparkle of uh, glass or ceramic or porcelain tiles, they kind of have a, a great, there is a great uh, contrast that speaks to me. And um, so those are some of those first pieces. Then these are just uh, other um, works that I have made um, where sometimes I feel like the ceramic, the glass tiles can be a different one from another and they um, they are like I was saying about this community project they are kind of fragmented pieces that don't really seem to have anything to do one with another but once you put them together sometimes you need to smooth the edges or of one or the other and suddenly it seems like those pieces are like having a conversation and it's like in uh, real life, yeah, like with people, then suddenly those differences actually enrich the final product, just like in society with uh, diversity of all types. So this is a, a guitar I made for my son in, what year it says here, 2015. And I made it when, uh, after Pete Seegers uh, passed away. So this is, yeah, here you can see the front and the back. This is a detail. It, I in, embedded there um, letters from, uh, a phrase from Pete Seegers. It says, I always believed that the right song at the right moment could change history. So that's his guitar. Um, Gorgeous, Cecilia, unbelievable. Uh, Thank you. This is a restoration I made many years ago of a um, Holocaust memorial uh, mural. It doesn't seem to be that big here, but it is huge. I was standing on um, uh, ladders uh, to, to work on it. And uh, here you can see an example of how it looked, the broken piece on the, on the left. And you can see on the right how it looked once it was repaired. Yeah. So this is repair sharp pieces. I met with the original um, artist, David Hollerman, uh, who made all of these tiles by himself. Absolutely amazing. This is an example of a Tzedakah box that I make. Um, dozens and dozens and dozens every year for, um, I collab, I uh, work closely with Jewish schools and temples um, to, uh, they give the gift to each of their bar or bat mitzvah kids. So the kids uh, get to choose the colors they want, in this case, green and purples. Um, and they tell me if they want the, the schools or the temples give me a list where they ask each kid what they want. So they tell me if they want the name in Hebrew or they want it in English or both, etc. Uh, that's uh, just an example of a commission that somebody wanted a gift for a bar mitzvah with a Torah. Everything is made out of glass, the little um, black uh, letters. Uh, that's another just many many this is a uh, setter plate i love the elongated setter plates although i make also this the round uh, typical ones 
um, those are just examples of several places. I, I also just have to interject to say, Cecilia, you are not only an incredible artist, but you're an incredible teacher because I know a few years ago, Marissa, who had been in our office, took a class and Marisa, she made a theater place that was unreal. You are such yes, a magnificent right? teacher. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, I miss Marisa. She's in Israel. Yeah. I think we all miss her. <laughs> I know. So this is um, a pride um, setter plate. I'm intending to make more of these with the beautiful rainbow colors. Um, and um, this was commissioned by me by uh, friends of my Mahatonim, um, my um, son's in-laws, um, they uh, uh, got married in a modern Orthodox wedding where not only the, um, the uh, boy breaks, um, I mean boy, <laughs> <laughs> the um, groom uh, breaks a glass, but also the two mothers break a plate. And the four cups that you see here are, uh, made, uh, are made with the ceramic uh, porcelain, I think it was, of the plate. And that it was a beautiful plate, as you can see. Um, with lines of uh, white and gray colors. So I just, they wanted a cedar plate or a, a Shabbat tray. And I decided to go with a cedar plate and I decided to do the four cups. And then I did also a matzah tray for them. So that was fun. Uh, that's a little detail of the same. And this is from our own uh, kids' wedding. Uh, my uh, son and daughter in love, Ellie. Um, so they got married in Baltimore. So I made on the one side the skylight of Baltimore, and on the other side, the skylight of uh, Boston. And um, where my son grew up, although he was born in Israel, truly, but um, yeah, and then uh, on the top, you can see those flowery uh, ceramic um, things that I added on the sky. Those are pieces of the, um, of the plate that uh, my Mahatonet um, and myself broke at the wedding. And I adore Abby, who we broke the plate with. Um, so that's another, um, actually, this was a commission by um, a beautiful couple who got married in Jerusalem the last day of Hanukkah last year. And they wanted to present uh, their rabbi with a gift. So what better gift than a Hanukkah? Men Hanukkah menorah um, for uh, because it was Hanukkah and with uh, the depiction of uh, Jerusalem made out of glass. So that, that's that's this is another. This was actually for the rabbi who married our kids, um, Rabbi Frank. So, um, I felt very grateful and I wanted to give him a gift also and this is a tea box from Wisotsky. so you open here that's it has all the tea inside and uh, it's also an um, image of uh, Jerusalem a colorful Jerusalem this is a mosaic portrait of my previous dog now we have another dog but this one um, um, I love making mosaic uh, portraits of pets. So it actually has the tag that she used to, to wear. Um, there it is. This is another um, commission of a dog that used to walk everywhere holding uh, her tennis ball. 
So, and actually she passed away a um, few weeks ago and now they are left with this um, uh, nice image of the dog. Uh, this is my grand cat, <laughs> our youngest son's uh, cat, Casey Jones. Very beautiful cat, so I made it in mosaics. This is a community project at Camp Rama, where we made um, uh, an aerial view of camp. So you can see there uh, all these little black things are bunks. All each each one is a uh, bunk, and then you have the lake, and there is the parking lot and tennis court, all kind of. Uh, so this is when we were finishing and we were cutting it in pieces, and this is when we were installing it. Um, and that's a nice picture of uh, some hands putting the last pieces of glass. This is another mosaic uh, community project where uh, kids made uh, Hanukkiot, actually. This is another community project where kids made the um, camp um, mascot if you will, they have a kangaroo mascot. So one of them, the yellow one, it says Ru'ah, like Ru'ah spirit. And then another one, the blue one has the logo. And the other one, the little one has the name Rama in Hebrew, Reish Mem Hey. So Cecilia, I have to tell you, I want to listen to you talk about this all day and I want to know more about each piece, but we have promised people 20 minutes and believe it or not, <laughs> we're at time. So please, everyone indulge me. I would like you to show us one more thing before we go, which is in addition to all of these magnificent community projects, um, Cecilia has been working on something that's actually very small that I love. Can you show us the heart rocks and tell us about them? The heart rocks? Yes. Um... These are my little tokens of appreciation that I've been doing for um, healthcare workers and uh, not only doctors, nurses, but also people that clean the ICUs and security personnel and everyone who has been exposing um, themsel themselves for um, the well-being of all of us and uh, risking their lives, risking the lives of their whole families. Um, I just learned of one who is actually living in an Airbnb so that he won't be exposing the family. So anyways, uh, I've been making like, I made more than 200 rocks and bringing them to hospitals. And this is how I start. Mm -hmm. I get my uh, adorable friends to pick rocks for me and uh, then I uh, draw um, hard then I start gluing uh, glass with special glue that is good for outdoors in case they want to keep them outdoors maybe next and to a tree. Should, should anyone want to know what kind of glue that is? Can yes, you tell us? You can, of, of course, you can use uh, silicone um, Actually, I have a little here. This is the one. You can use that and you can feel free to call me or send me a note if you want uh, details. Um, you can use also things at mortar, but it's a little more complicated. This is good in uh, silicone. This is when an example of one that is all covered with glass and then I put tape around so that I won't get the grout in the uh, around the uh, ceram the uh, not not get the rock dirty with grout um, and then I grout and then I put a little bit of uh, sealer around so that it will be more stable. But yeah, I have many 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 of these hundreds uh, just brought to Boston Medical Center a couple of days ago and beautiful. Yeah.
I love everything about that, Cecilia, the mosaic piece, the kindness piece, and, I, and that you're leaving us with something we all might want to consider trying. So thank you. It's really um, fun. So. I have so many more questions for you. So we're going to schedule a round two, and I hope you'll all come back. <laughs> Of course. Okay. <laughs> um, she also does belt buckles. She sells mezuzot and she sells mosaic making kits on Etsy, should you be interested, just to note. Um, but thank you, Cecilia. This has been so much fun. Um, I must tell you all thank before you. we go that next Tuesday, July 7th, we will have Guy Mendelo on for J Live Music. If you don't know him, he is an incredible world musician. He was born in Israel and he's brought together a group of musicians in Boston who are just so talented. They do a lot of Ladino work and otherwise um, really should be a wonderful show, July 7th. And on Friday, July 24th at 4 p.m., we'll have award-winning chef Michael Levitin um, working actually with Cafe Landver to do a special J Live food, um, all about Israeli food. He is also the chair of our Taste of Israel program. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, and of course, last but not least, as the J Arts tagline says, let culture connect us. And none of this is possible without generous community support like yours. So if you would like to help make this possible, there is a donate link in the chat button. And um, we hope you will consider giving. Um, Cecilia, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I assure you we'll have you back. Thank you. It thank was a you. pleasure and an honor. I think we're all a little bit more inspired. So thanks for that on a rainy I day. So. <laughs> thank you. Great. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.